Good morning, everybody. Chag Sameach. Thank, thank you, everyone, for being here. There's a reason that we're here and not in other places. And it's, uh, it's, it's Sameach. On, on the other hand, we need to be realistic. There's a big divide within the Jewish community. This is the time of year that the Jewish community between religious and more religious or religious Zionists and, and Haredim celebrate or ignore to celebrate many symbols of the state of Israel. Starting with, we, we had a few weeks ago, Yom HaShoah. Yom HaShoah, the entire nation stood up to a siren for a minute to remember, to remember, the, to remember the lost souls and the, the, the biggest tragedy in Jewish history. Many, there are many excuses as to why many of the religious people do not stand up or ignore Yom HaShoah, don't, don't see it. All kinds of excuses. The excuse that I hear the most is that a siren and standing at attention for a minute is not a Jewish custom. It's a Goish custom. And what I answer to them is there, we've taken over the years many customs from the Goim in the different lands that we've been in. And if you look at many of the religious Jews, the way they dress, in the black garb, and I'm not trying to insult anyone, I'm just trying to inform people here, in the way they're dressed in the black garb, in the hats, that's how Englishmen, uh, noblemen in Europe used to dress. Abraham Avinu did not dress like that. Our rabbis from the Sanhedrin, from the, from the times of Rabbi Akiva did not dress like that. Going back a little bit, the Maccabim did not dress like that. The Rambam, the Rashi, no one dressed like that. So. To say that the siren is, is a Goish custom and to find a reason not to stand up or to ignore it is just an excuse. Among other excuses, not to sing Atikva. There's a problem with Atikva, with, with, the, with a few words in Atikva. Liot am chufshi baratzeinu, to be free in our, in our land. To go back to Yom HaShoah, why, why was Yom HaShoah chosen that day? And maybe it conflicts with certain things in the Jewish calendar. Yom HaShoah was chosen by Temple Emanuel of New York. And it's, it represents the beginning of the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto. The, really, the first time in 2,000 years the Jews decided to, to lift up their hand and, and defend themselves. Mordechai Ani Levitz, a 22-year-old boy in the ghetto, gathered on the day of Yom HaShoah, gathered his people, and he told them, he said, we're going up against the mightiest army in Europe. We will lose. We have no chance. But either we go to the gas chambers, or we will choose the way we want to die. That was... That's Yom HaShoah. The next day, a few days after Yom HaShoah, a couple weeks after Yom HaShoah, is Yom HaZikaron. Many, many synagogues, they do nothing. Here in our community, there's a beginning of some synagogues doing something. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a day that is, divides the Jewish people. And here it's not only religious and non-religious. It really divides Israelis from the Jews in the diaspora. Over 23,000 men, women, and children lost their lives fighting and dying and killed in terror attacks in Israel while performing the mitzvah of returning and settling to the land. The only main event that we have in this community is in Beth Torah once a year. And if you go to that event, 90% are Israelis. As if they're the only ones that had, had ex experienced that loss they're the only ones that are willing to go that evening, one evening, and commemorate the fallen in, in, in our generation since 1948. Today we come on Yom Atzmaut. Again, we say, we say Hallel, some with a bracha, some without a bracha, some don't say anything. Some say the prayer of Tachanun, which they have to say Tachanun on Yom Atzmaut. It's important to them. We don't. One of the major reasons for the celebration of Yom Atzmaut is to rejoice in the restoration of Hebrew independence in the land of Israel 
following a long and bitter exile of the majority of Jews from our soil. Yom Atzmaut celebrates the liberation of Eretz Yisrael from British rule and the reestablishment of Jewish political sovereignty over our land. The Rambam, the Rambam teaches that it is a Torah commandment in every generation that the nation of Israel take control of and inhabit the entire land of Israel. It took us 2,000 years to get there. In the Talmud, Yeshua's war of liberation, Yeshua ben Nun, the war of liberation was obligatory. It was an obligatory duty according to all opinions. All opinions recognize Yeshua ben Nun and Kaleb ben Afuna, two from the 12 spies who went to spy. Nobody really knows. Uh, the, the, the more scholarly people do know the names of the other 10 spies, but they had nothing to do with changing the course of Jewish history. We cannot leave the land in control of any other nations. We have to go up and conquer. As Hashem said, God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear and do not be discouraged. The Jewish people go up and conquer Eretz Israel. We don't go and conquer other lands. We're not interested in other lands. We're interested in conquering and fighting and defending in the land of Israel. The Rambam said that the conquest of Eretz Israel is a mitzvah for Israel in every generation and that we are forbidden from allowing any part of the country to fall or remain under foreign control. Yom Atzmaut commemorates the fifth day of Eyal, 5708, when Israel fulfilled this mitzvah for the first time in nearly 2,000 years by declaring Hebrew independence in portions of our homeland. Aside from re renewing the mitzvah of Hebrew sovereignty, there's another essential reason to celebrate Yom Atzmaut. The sages teach us that it is a mitzvah to thank Hashem for the miracles that Hashem performs. This was the basis for sanctifying Chanukah and Purim. And like Chanukah, Yom Atzmaut commemorates the triumph of the small and the few ill-equipped Jewish fighters against some of the world's most powerful empires. The British ruled the land of Israel since World War I and had everything in their power to prevent the Jews from achieving statehood. While Israel's political leadership acquiesced to Britain's imperialist designs, a courageous minority of young revolutionaries launched a war of liberation that eventually succeeded in attaining independence. As Hebrew fighters displayed tenacious heroism in the face of nearly impossible odds, Hashem worked through these fighters to force the British Empire from the shores of Palestine. And it was on the fifth day of Yom Yomat Smoot, that the Union Jack was ultimately lowered from the Jewish homeland. We should be grateful to be alive in this time of history, to witness the hour of redemption that so many great and holy leaders of our people did not merit to see. The Rambam defined the mitzvah of Yeshua Haaretz, settling the land of Israel, as we will not abandon it to another nation or leave it desolate. This definition makes it clear that the mitzvah is first and foremost an obligation of the nation. The Jewish people are commanded to take possession of the land of Israel and rule over it. On the basis of that national mitzvah, there is a mitzvah for each individual to live in Eretz Israel. The commandment is obvious and clear, so why do so many great scholars appear to be unsure about it? Our sages say there is the sin of the spies. In every generation hovers over the nation of Israel, the sin of the spies. The two that went at, against the advice and, and courage or lack of courage of the other ten. Those who relate to Jewish history as having played out in ancient times but being currently paused waiting for the Mashiach to come generally restrict Jewish life to matters of religion and are divorced from public life and national development of Am Yisrael. The most amazing miracle of Yom Atzmaut is perhaps the foundation for all the others. After so many centuries of persecution, Hashem placed a new spirit of valor into our people. For the first time in modern history, a generation of Jewish heroes arose, willing to lay down their lives for the liberation of the homeland. Rav, Rav Kook said in the 20 years, close to 30 years before 1948. It's the first time that he, he has seen or it has been known to the Jewish people that Jews, 
They could be secular. They could be eating on Yom Kippur. They could be eating non-kosher. But they were willing to give their life for Eretz Yisrael. Yom Atzmaut is the most significant world event to take place in nearly 2,000 years. It was on this day that Hashem returned the children of Israel to the stage of history so that we may lead mankind towards a world of total blessing. It is the goal of creation that the divine ideal be fully expressed through Israel, bringing humanity to an awareness of Hashem. My son-in-law has first cousin that was, was honored to light the torch yesterday. His first cousin and his wife, they lit the torch because each one of them decided to donate a kidney, not to a person in particular, but to anyone who might be waiting for a kidney. And they were given that. And, the, and Moshe Levy's cousin's name is Moshe Levy, and his wife's name is Nili Levy. And yesterday they lit a torch. They spoke yesterday about some of the miracles that we're seeing today. Today, Israel has 10 times the population that, of Jews that we had in 1948. The economy is 100 times the size of the economy in 1948. I quote many times, I say, this is the best time for the Jewish people since the times of King David. Israel is the center of Torah study. Israel leads in many fields in desalination, in agriculture. You see Chinese coming to Israel investing because they need to feed their people. They're coming and to invest in Israel, buying up companies, buying up technology. Every, every major technology company in the world has an office or, headquarter or some, uh, a, a significant presence in Israel, not because there's a market in Israel, it's only a, a, a market of eight million people, because it is a source of brain power. We see today also Israel has the eighth mightiest army in the world, probably the mightiest army in the world, man for man. And we used to have, from 1948, we used to have to beg or connive to get weapons to Israel to defend ourselves. Today, we don't need to beg. We produce our own weapons. We enhance American technology. And our weapons are considered some of the best weapons in the world, sought by, by many. Our leaders are respected. Our leaders, so you know, from 1948 until the Kennedy administration, Ben Gurion, the Prime Minister of Israel, was not welcome in the White House. The first time he was welcome in the White House was almost 13 years after. Last night, Hannah and I were at a very interesting event. The ambassador of Israel, Danny Danon, to the United Nations, he decided instead of just having another cocktail where many ambassadors go to, they go for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they respect each other, instead of having just another cocktail to, for celebrating Israel's Independence Day, which of course many countries won't go, he decided to take them to see Fiddler on the Roof. And he said, the main reason he's taking them there, and he spoke before the play, he says, if you know the story, the ending would not be the same ending if we had a state of Israel. And the story itself would probably not be the same story. He has a very interesting position, and we see many miracles, even in the last five years. He told me, there's, he gets, you can go on YouTube, he gets criticized and he, he's very firm and he's very aggressive. He gets criticized and he gets into major arguments in, uh, on many panels within the United Nations. And he told me without naming anybody individually, he says many times in the evening, he gets a call from the ambassador that he was attacking verbally and the ambassador was attacking him verbally, saying the worst of things. The ambassador calling at night saying, I'm sorry, this is my directive, I have to do it. I have to do it in front of, because of his country, I have to do it in front of the United Nations and in front of the world. One other irony, that as you walk into this hotel, this hotel is owned 
by a Bedouin family. This hotel is owned by the owners of Al Jazeera from Qatar. And here we are celebrating Yom Atzmaut. Our forefathers, including those who survived the Holocaust, never dreamed to see what we see today. We live here in the United States. You don't have to live for Israel. You don't have to die for Israel. You have to fight for Israel every day. Be part of Yeshua ben Nun and Caleb ben Afuna, be part of those who change Jewish history. Chag Sameach, Utiferet, Medinat Yisrael.